Welcome back to our continuing adventures on the Let's Defend platform. Today we are tackling the Malicious Auto It Challenge. This is underneath the Security Analyst Path. It is a beginner and it is also free, so thank God for that. <laughs> uh, analyze the Auto IT Malware as a Malware Analyst. Our organization's SOC has detected suspicious activity related to an auto at script. Can you analyze this EXE and help us answer the following questions? Looks like we're going to get a Windows machine. Given the file location is C colon slash users. Let's defend desktop challenge file sample. So get this going here. I've got this booting up. So questions. What is the MD5 hash of the sample file according to detected easy? What is the entropy of the sample file? According to detected easy, what is the virtual address of the dot text section? According to the detect, I'm assuming detected easy tool, what is the time date stamp? Okay, so apparently we're going to use the die tool a lot. What is the entry point address of the executable? What is the domain used by the malicious embedded code? What is the file path encoded in hexadecimal in the malicious code? Okay then. Oh, so for those who may not know, Autoit is a automation script that you can basically go through build. It will make uh, executables uh, using their language for everything. So, uh, freeware programming language for Windows. Primarily intended to create automation scripts for Windows programs, but has since grown, grown to include enhancements in both programming language design and overall functionality. So basically, quick and easy way to create a script and have it user run on Windows machines. Depending as to what you're looking to actually go through and do. Um, I know that this was a, a big thing. It tends to trigger a lot of viral detections. Um, the scripts and everything else like that. Uh, just because of the fact that it seems to pick up I think mo most engines have a a, um, a signature for Autoit in terms of how the thing is built. Um, when you go to make that .exe file, that would get uh, dumped through. Basic like scripting language. Scripts can be compiled into standalone executables with AUT2EXE. So, I mean, if you don't want to have to learn anything else and you have nothing but Windows machines, then, I mean, this could be a good way to go through and, you know, create a bunch of automation scripts that are just EXEs that you can effectively just kick off. Um, I will need to log in again. Really? All right. Okay, everything has come up. I have the RDP session established. And so right where it said it was on the desktop challenge file, sample.7zip extracted out with um, 7zip with the default password of infected. And okay, we need to. First question is obtaining the MD5, so we're going to open up HashCalc. I'm just going to drop this sucker in here, and we end up with the MD5 of 5 Echo 5, ending in 5 Charlie 8. And if I got this spaced out enough, I can just paste it in here, and it should show up that you guys can see it. And we submit, and all right, we're on our way. Okay, and now we need to use detect it for everything else. So what I'm going to do is, I am gonna just go ahead and yoinketh that boinketh the sample. And 
I'm going to put it on my local file server. So in the event that this craps out in terms of connection, I can just come right back to it. Okay. Uh, detect it easy. <clears throat> And we'll let that fire up. And so we got the hash. So if we just take that. So let's go to virus total and let's just do a hash search. Dump that in. And okay, detected easy is up. Okay, good. Let's just copy that in there. So it confirms auto it. Okay, let's bring this back. Let's just take a look at the detections for this thing. 54 minutes ago, so I'm assuming somebody else is doing this challenge at the same time I am. Comes back as secure.exe. 51 out of 73 engines, so damn near 75% detection rate it comes back as a downloader we may have to use this to come back to answer questions maybe like if we take a look at relations we're gonna get yeah the what it's trying to actually make communications to from the sample okay let's we'll, we'll come back to this <clears throat> okay we need What do we need? We're looking for the dot text file. Oh. Oh, well, one of them was uh, entropy, right? Oh, yeah, actually, what is the entropy? So that was, you got the sample dumped in, file info change method to entropy and we get 6.58565 6 oh oops 6.58565 submit we are correct Virtual address of the dot text section. So that was I didn't realize I wasn't showing it. So okay, we got detected easy open. We've dumped it the sample file, not the sample dot seven zip, just the sample. We do file info and we go entropy. I guess we could have also just done hash because MD5 is one of the ones that's created. If we take a look at entry points. And I do not use this un tool enough in terms of being able to quickly point out where we might need this stuff. Oh, here we go. Because the next aspect we're looking for is what is the virtual address of the dot text section? And this is just done in a number format. Okay, so inside of here, we're taking a look at the memory map. We can see that section zero dot text. We got offset, and we've got address. And this is they want virtual address, not offset. So we got address of zero zero four zero one zero zero zero, which if we had convert it over, it would be zero x four zero one. Oops. Zero one zero zero zero. And submit. No? Dot text. Virtual address. Size, not offset. Zero zero four zero one zero zero zero, and that is apparently close. Uh, 
But wouldn't we just do 0x to denote that it's a bunch of zeros beforehand? Because that's the format. What if we did relative? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <sighs> okay. So it's a difference in how. So they ask for the virtual address. So what we see that as 00401000. If we were to put it in the format, it would be, we take the leading zeros and they just become 0x. And then we start with the actual numbers. What the question should be is, what is the relative virtual address, at least according to the tool? Because that takes the four out of the equation. So then it just becomes 00001000. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Which, if to put it in the format, again, those leading zeros become 0x, zero and then 1 obviously is the first number because 4 is gone. That is, then it becomes 0x, zero or yeah, 0x, zero 1, zero, zero, 0, And that gave us the, the four or correct number of characters, digits, whatever you want to go by, in terms of 6, and gives us the answer that they're actually looking for. So, okay. I suppose had I actually paid attention to the number of asterisks um, like I typically do, then it obviously wouldn't have made sense to actually, because it's six digits, the four zero one zero zero zero, um, And that would have been the whole thing when they're expecting the format of zero X and then your numbers. Okay, so just bear that in mind, relative virtual address. And then we're looking for time and date. Time and date. Time and date. Oh, time and date stamp. It looks like, is that the whole thing there? Right here. So it shows 2020-02-26 space 21 colon 41 colon 13. So if we copy it, we paste it, we submit it, we get it. Entry point for the executable is up here. Again, they want it in the same format. So up our right-hand corner, we get entry point. We're just going to copy without the... Ooh, wait. We're going to copy the whole thing. So we're going to do 0042800A. We're going to pop that in there, and then we're going to do our... 0x change of format. We're going to submit. That one's okay. <laughs> okay. What is the main used by the malicious embedded code? What is the file path? Of the... Okay. So now we're going to have to start getting into something else. So I'm assuming that is why they gave us auto it ripper. From the PowerShell command line, auto it ripper, sample. Oh, so is this actually in and running then? Or. And this is why I'm glad I am running <clears throat> uh, on a their virtual machine. So if we just try to kick it off from here, is it going to be like, hey, you need to give us more? Okay. <laughs> I'll roll with that. So first off, let us just go ahead and do a CD and then into our challenge file section. We will go ahead and do auto ripper or auto it ripper. 
And according to that, then we need the sample, which is just sample. And then the output directory. Well, we're in here, so let's just do this. Let's just create a new, and we will call it output. And I'm just going to put the whole path in there. Let's see as to whether or not if it fails. It looks like it made a scrape script.au3. Can we open that notepad plus plus? We can. <laughs> okay, so we can see some stuff in here without having to go through and do any sort of decoding or anything else fancy. So again, all we did was inside of PowerShell. Can I change the font? Isn't it properties? Buffer size, cursor size, font. I just want to make this bigger. Try to make it easier for everybody to be able to actually see what in the hell I did. Okay. So started off, opened up PowerShell. Okay, see, users, let's defend. Did auto it dash ripper in order to just verify that PowerShell was going to understand the command. It did because it's like, oh, hey, there's uh, some usage you need to do. So it obviously knew enough to kick it off. And since we didn't give it everything, it generated the problem. So then I changed directory into the desktop challenge file folder and then ran as it suggested. So auto it dash ripper file called sample not sev sample dot seven zip because that's the we're not doing the compressed file we want the uncompressed and then it wants an output directory so I just made a output directory and just inside a challenge file folder and it popped out a script dot a u3 which um, notepad plus plus will open up and not have any sort of problem with so what is the domain used by the malicious embedded code? So looking at it, digging through all this stuff, we end up with only one domain that we see that's referenced twice, and that is office-cleaner-commander.com. It looks like it pulls a pay.txt and a run.txt. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that. We're going to paste that in and we're going to submit and we are on the money okay <clears throat> what is the file path encoded in hexadecimal Hmm. That's the question. All right, so we do see in the the virus total. So my thought process is okay. Let's see what's already been done for us. So the office dash cleaner dash commander dot com. And now I'm effectively just waiting for page is slowing down Firefox. Yeah, I get just the fact that I probably need to replace the system. So where do you try to run something? Files opened. Files written, files deleted. Hmm. 
Well, I guess we're going to have to go through and start trying to do some decoding. Process tree... It doesn't really help a whole hell of a lot now, does it? No, it does not. Okay. Okay, it's effectively just staring right in the face. So, if we look at the code, local dollar sign APWDKQXNQ binary to string, we get hexadecimal encoding of 0x3a ending in 33325 Charlie. So we take that string, we dump that into CyberChef, and we go create the recipe from hex. This turns into colon slash window slash system32, which if we then compare that to what they're expecting for an answer, colon slash uh, no, that's not what I want. Uh, I like to try to avoid any more wrong answers, if at all possible. <laughs> okay, then we end up with what is the name of the DLL called by the malicious code? Oh. 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 That's user 32.dll. And I'm like, Brett, what are you talking about? We can't see this. Where do you find such a thing? Oh, okay. Let's first make sure that I'm actually getting it right before I run you, run, run you astray. Okay, let's go back to our RDP window. So, if we look at the code down at the very bottom, so we've got our domains listed twice, we get our hexadecimal encoded um, colon slash window slash system32. We follow it a little bit further down until we do a DLL call. What is the name of the DLL called by the malicious code? There's only one DLL in this last little section. So basically um, lines, well technically it's line 53. You get DLL call user 32.dll, which ends up being exactly it, since it's right there in the code. No need to deobfuscate, no need to decrypt. It is right there, thankfully. And as that goes, we just finished. <laughs> so definitely easy. Um, easier if you have a lot of experience with the detect easy tool so you know you know what little sections to hit everything else like that and realistically the the what what was it the um, 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 um the third question yeah virtual address should be what is the the relative virtual address um although i guess technically if you use the number of asterisks in the uh, answer section as what you need to have it fill. Yeah, okay, you, you kind of get that, but but realistically it should be what is the, the relative virtual address in order for everything to be on the metaphorical up and up. Um, and then past that point, again, CyberChef from Hex Recipe. Uh, once you can actually get the code popped down, everything else along those lines. So, yeah. And then the rest of it is easy, as it were. <laughs> so there we go. That is the malicious auto-it, or auto-it, depending as to how you want to pronounce it, challenge on the Let's Defend platform. Um, hopefully you were able to go through and do this without needing to uh, take a look, or if you got stuck at a particular point, hopefully you've got everything else done, and the way that 
I operated makes some sort of sense to you. If not, I don't, I don't live in the comment section, but I am on enough stuff that uh, you should be able to reach out if needed. Um, Twitter's open. The Let's Defend Discord, which if you're doing these type of exercises alongside, you probably should be a member of. Um, I'm in there. Posts get done on LinkedIn, so you can ask questions there. Um, don't typically jump in too much in like the actual uh, Discord like voice channels and stuff like that, but um, I guess if there was enough of stuff to actually go through and do something live, maybe, maybe be convinced to do something along those lines. But, but so there we go. There's one more challenge down. Um, I'm just wondering. It's just like this should go out the 28th then. So this will be the last September challenge for Let's Defend. And then I think there was still one more left that I was going to sit there and take a stab at. Yeah, log analysis with Sysmon, because Sysmon is the bomb. So, anyways, um, all that being said, I will see everyone in the next video.